Why would someone travel from Pennsylvania to Utah to talk about Jesus? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Today, I'm really happy and pleased to introduce Kaz Dombrowski. That's great Kaz, to be here. thanks for coming. Thank you so and much. all the way from Pennsylvania. All the way from Pennsylvania. Just to talk about Jesus. To talk about the Lord, <laughs> absolutely. Well, I appreciate you doing this uh, and sharing your story, and it's, it's just fantastic. Thank you. As we usually do, we try to find out where you're from and where were you born. And I was born in uh, central Massachusetts. I was born in Worcester. Oh, okay. Uh, I lived in Worcester County. That's how you say that. Worc Worcester. Worcester. Well, if I said it, it more like them, they'd be say Worcester. But Worcester. <laughs> I say <laughs> Worcester. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I grew up in uh, in a small town, a little bit away from uh, uh, Worcester. in the in the sticks. Okay. Uh, but then in Massachusetts. Who were your folks LDS? Uh, my mother, uh, she still is. My father was never LDS. He's Roman Catholic. Oh, okay. Yes. That must have been interesting. Yes. Um, they, uh, it was decided a long time before uh, I was born that my mother was the more religious person. Uh, so we were going to be, my sisters and I were going to be LDS. Uh, but my, my parents divorced. Um, I couldn't tell you the year, first or second grade. I, I don't oh, have a whole lot of... You were still pretty young. I was pretty young, yeah. Okay. When, when, uh, but you stayed with your mother? And, yeah, we stayed with the mother. Went with my, active in the church then? Uh, I would say so-so as a youngster. Oh. Um, my youngest memories when actually my father was still at home, we went to, uh, went to a ward that was about mm, 30 minutes or so drive. Yeah. And I remember going to uh, vaguely um, like primary. Hmm. I was old enough to get my CTR ring. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, before my s sisters and I, uh, my sis my two s older sisters and I were, uh, um, none of us were baptized. We stopped going. Um, oh. My understanding now, I could be wrong. If someone sees this and <laughs> tells my mother. Uh, I think my mother wasn't too excited because they had said they told us that we were being transferred to a, a branch. Oh, rather than a ward? Yeah. Oh. It was in uh, New England is uh, some of the lowest uh, members of the church, oh, okay. the LDS church. So travel f distances to do, to go to church and also small branches or wards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you uh, eventually do get baptized. Yes. Um, actually, this story, we had been, uh, I was about nine years old and my grandmother, um, she wanted my sisters and I to be more involved with okay. church. We actually had the missionaries come. Uh, they came, it was a, quite a span of time, but they came once a week and they taught us. So when I was, I was baptized when I was 10. Oh, okay. Uh, in early 1983. All right. And then you're active and going in? I, well, we were, I was sporadic. We were sporadic. Oh, okay. um, I had a t I had times of going, I was, um, a little bit active when I was about 13 and I became a deacon. Okay. Uh, then there was a time then was less active for a few years. Uh, but, uh, things changed when I was 17. Okay. What happened then? All right. The story goes, I was at a school dance and, uh, a, a girl caught my eye, met her. We headed off a very nice young lady. And, uh, I was able to get her phone number. So we started dating and, and uh, she, she said she was a Christian. Uh, we, I went to her youth group one time and we talked about, uh, we talked about religious things. Um, one night really uh, changed a lot in my life. Because um, actually at the time, just to let you know, I was not active in the church when I was dating her. Uh, one night she was questioning me on some points of doctrine uh, on the church. And I felt very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable, very unsure, very confused. Um, because you didn't really have a good foundation in Mormonism? or uh, That was maybe part of it, but 
part of it is it was just so it did it did seem very odd it's it just it felt not right something didn't feel right about the about what some of the things she was saying now she was saying it in love i have you know she wasn't mean or anything like that she was she was very nice about it and you know uh but i had about a uh, after i was uh, i left her house but about i had about a 20 minute ride home and at that point i was in the car and i just was i had just so much flooding so much going through my mind i remember praying and uh, i said you know uh, lord i just i want to i want to follow you uh and you only actually it wasn't quite like you only i would say because the only gospel i knew was the gospel of mormonism sure. and so i did promise i i told the lord i said lord i i, I give me a car i'll go to church well a few months later i was able to get a car <laughs> <laughs> and i became at that point i became an active lds member all on my own okay so i was 17 uh, <clears throat> And then from there, being active, I became, I shortly became a priest, uh, decided to go, that I was going to prepare for a mission, became an elder, and got my mission call. To, where'd, you, where'd you go? Uh, to Salt Lake City. Oh, you're kidding. Right here, <laughs> uh, where we're recording this, is not too, too far <laughs> away from one of my areas. Is that right? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so, missionary from Massachusetts to... To uh, Salt Lake. Yes, and now I won't. I won't lie. It was uh, reading that I had always said I'll go anywhere but Utah, anywhere but Utah. <laughs> and I was went to Utah, and it it was people said, "Oh, are you excited?" And I'd be like, "Yeah," and I'm, but in my mind, I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying. I don't want to be with Utah Mormons. <laughs> we have a reputation out there in the in the world, I guess, don't we? Oh, well, you're in Zion, so you're the best. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and everyone else is, okay. Um, in the mission field. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So how was the mission? All right, my first half of my mission, I loved it. I was able to go out, uh, just getting more comfortable talking to people. Yeah. Uh, I had some I had good some good companions. Uh, yeah, I, I was very excited about... Uh, about things that were happening uh had some interesting situations like one of my first days out on my mission i almost got mugged oh, oh, oh yeah <laughs> that was scary but uh yeah I, I i ran i ran away from that but that's yeah i got out of that one that was scary <laughs> but uh no the first year of my mission was really good um i did have one little odd part i had a companion uh, and he loved deep doctrine mm -hmm. and for the uh, he told me a lot of things but one thing that stuck with me that he said that I had never heard of was that Heavenly Father Elohim had come down to earth to actually father Jesus, Jesus to actually have relations with her this is not from an anti-Mormon or anything no, this was from my missionary companion yeah. And That's Bruce R. McConkie for sure. <laughs> yeah, and that blew me away. Was it a, something to tell me, you know, say, stop going to, you know, stop being a missionary? No. 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 But I, did I think that was bizarre and a little, I was very uncomfortable with that. Uh, but, but he was, overall, he was a very nice companion. <laughs> yeah. But that's um, an interesting concept, isn't it? To, yeah. That God would come down and have a relationship with Mary. Yeah, well, now uh, it kind of bothered me then but it, well, now it really bothers me <laughs> yeah. and uh, I yeah that's a very uh doesn't sit, sit well no with uh the way that uh, I wonder uh, how many Mormons really understand that but uh, I don't think too many no yeah no I, I I never heard it I had only heard it from him before, before. I had heard it from other sources <laughs> yeah yeah um so the second second half? half of my mission i began to start uh, at some companions that weren't top notch oh. say some were lazy some were rude yeah. some were very hard to live with selfish um i got a bit depressed mm. um but what i did is i hit it oh man it was painful i hit it i 
I didn't want to be, I couldn't go home because no. then it would be a failure. Yeah. And, you know, and I had, I felt a lot on my shoulders because I was, I have a lot of younger cousins. I had a lot of less active family. I had non-member family. So you felt it's important to be an example then, probably. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if I fail, then that's going to, you know, the repercussions are going to be eternal. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't until, uh, you know, that was a very hard part. Then my very last few months of my air, uh, my mission, I really, I did enjoy it. I had a great companion. Uh, and I actually um, met my wife-to-be. Really? Yes. Uh, well, I didn't know it. I was part of her, uh, I taught her the discussions. And she was baptized LDS. Oh, my. And... Uh, so, but we, I didn't, I didn't date her uh, for several months after I was off my mission. So I don't want anyone thinking anything. <laughs> but you should have been sent home or something. I know. No. So you go back home to Massachusetts I just go back and then to, come back. Yeah, it was just, I went home two months. And I came back to, yeah, to Salt Lake. To see her, I imagine. No, actually. No? I mean, I was I'm glad to see her. Yeah. She, we were friends. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I had... Uh, I'd started going to school. Uh, I wanted to go to school out here. I had lived out here long enough. I wanted to try yeah. life out here. Okay. Yeah. So then you end up getting married. We did. Yeah. We got married in the Jordan River Temple uh, in March of 95. Wow. Yes, that was, that was lovely. Uh, the uh, My wife was very lovely and very beautiful. And so <laughs> that was... And still is. <laughs> oh, she is. We uh, we actually did a recommitment ceremony. Uh, um, this is kind of a little off track here, but uh, rec recommitment ceremony on our anniversary. It would be an, was our twenty third wedding anniversary, and we got we got married in a Christian setting. Mm. Uh, so it was very dear and. We did your vows and stuff. Yes, we did. It was it was That's uh, neat. that was very exciting because we had our four children with us there mm -hmm. and our grandson. Uh, that was phenomenal. That was a phenomenal day. Um, but uh, as for going back, <laughs> yeah. So you've you've been married in the temple. Yeah. I assume you're active now in yes. the church. Yes. Yes. Serving. I know you're executive secretary and primary uh, Sunday school president and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, right. Board clerk. And, yeah. Yeah. So I, lots of busy callings and stuff. Yes, uh, busy. Yeah. <laughs> and so what happens in life? Okay. Well. Um, we, uh, we had, uh, after we got married, we moved to Massachusetts, uh, oh, okay. lived there for five years, and then we actually had moved back to, we had moved back to Utah. Okay. Um, I felt, uh, uh, during this time, very active, raised our kids, uh, you know, our oldest son, uh, was, uh, you know, he got baptized, he got ordained a deacon, uh, baptized my daughter. Uh, we, you know, I felt an urge to move back east. My wife will say I was homesick, yeah. uh, you know, for the northeast, and and so we we uh, came. We moved to uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Now, where is mom living at this time? My mom. Uh -huh. My mom lives in Massachusetts. So she's still been there. She's still in the basically the same spot. Oh, okay. I'm well, just curious and. She was happy, of course, that you were active and found your way in. Yeah, it's. Um, she sometimes she thought I was too active. Oh. <laughs> that I was too. I, I was too obedient. I followed it too much, <laughs> which and kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> How to think about that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, we lived in. Uh, we ended up moving back to Utah. Yeah. And I, oh, like I said, uh, we. Oh, and then ended up in Lancaster. Then we moved to Lancaster. Okay, okay that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, after, you know, I went. We went there, fully planning on being active. I uh, was there for a couple of years, and some things that started changing things for me. Now I had through the years I had had spouts, uh, little spouts of uh, doubt, but I didn't tell Thing, anybody. Things that you heard, or just what. Uh, just some things just didn't add up. Now you'd said earlier that you had always had a relationship with Jesus, you felt, yeah. of sorts. Yes. Was it a Mormon Jesus, do you think, as you look back on it now? Or did you feel like you had a more personal relationship with him? I feel like I had more personal relationship with him. Did you? Um, yeah. The, 
the concept of the LDS he Heavenly Father um, doesn't seem uh, didn't seem right with me. Um, well, now even on, oh okay. even now, but see, I talked to my uh, I remember this. It was my missionary, uh, my MTC companion. Uh, we had a conversation. I don't know how it brought up it. We were talking about well, if if there was only one God, what would make sense? Would it be Heavenly Father or Jesus? And my companion and I differed. Uh, he said it would be Heavenly Father, and I said it would be Jesus because we need we need a Savior. Uh, so little did you know later, <laughs> yeah, what would happen? Absolutely. Uh, I so uh, as time progressed, um, one of the first things that uh, was brought me to uh, starting to leave the the church was a PBS special uh, uh, years ago on uh, that was on the Mormons and my uh, my wife was videotaping it we still <laughs> at the VCR. time on VCR at the time uh, I actually she was sleeping uh, I walked upstairs and that segment on um, the Mountain Meadows Massacre mm -hmm. popped up and that night was a horrible night for me I my heart sunk I just thought, I was, this is horrible. This is a terrible thing. And if it had anything to do with the leadership of the church, how can we be following them? However, the, the next day, we, I went to church. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> um, I went to church, but with, with something in the heart that just... I think God was planting a seed oh, or two yeah, there, huh? just, Oh, it was, God was, God was working in the, at this point. Uh, it wasn't long after this, um, when I was the Sunday school president, I had um, my, uh, I've, I was trying to be good and read the handbook and follow the brethren. And uh, I told the bishop, I said, Bishop, I, I see that we're not doing this from the handbook. And he told me, he says, that's a Utah thing. We don't do that in Pennsylvania. Oh. <laughs> and I thought, but this is from the brethren? So am I supposed to follow the brethren? Or am I supposed to follow oh, my you? bishop? Hmm. hmm. What? And that, from there, I could tell that I was starting to, it was, I was, we were, I was starting to go down. <laughs> um, and uh, after a short period of time, I did, I, I stopped going. Not for um, necessarily going after the Lord, but just stop going. Uh, I didn't want to be there. I didn't feel comfortable. Uh, but like I said, uh, we had said earlier. What do I think um, at this point? She uh, she supported me all the way. Oh. Um, she she didn't. I don't think she knew necessarily which way to go. Um, they went to church a couple weeks. Uh, maybe a few weeks after I had pulled, I left, uh, but she felt very uncomfortable there without me, and uh, so she, she quit, going, she quit right. going as well. But now going back to the your actual leaving, what was in your mind? Were you just saying, well, the church isn't true, or Joseph Smith not a prophet, or the Book of Mormon? Were you that specific, or you just no? Something it what? something wasn't right. Um, and you know, I had a, a conf. See, I didn't. I I still liked the, my bishop at sure. the time. He's a he's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, and I I just felt very uncomfortable with having to uh, to follow. I felt like I had to follow his counsel over the first presidency, which made me uncomfortable. Oh, sure. And I, uh, I just it was just something gnawing at me. Um, yeah. That I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be there. I just didn't feel comfortable anymore wow. there. So you go on for a few little bit there. And <laughs> what happened? Yeah, what happened shortly after we stopped going? Um, I I prayed a lot. I I was I prayed, I prayed, and I remember um, one night in June 2007, uh, I was praying and said, one of my, you know. What am I supposed to do? And uh, I'm not sure which direction because I was very concerned for my and my spir my family's spiritual welfare. And your eternal life. Yeah. yeah eternal life. And uh, I just, at that point, I just said, uh, Lord, uh, 
I've decided to just follow you. I will go where you want me to go. I will wherever. I said, I remember the, in the prayer, I said something to the effect of, I'll even go back to the Mormon church if that's where you want me to, to go. I said, at the time, I said, I don't want to go. I said, if you want me but to go, me, I will. <laughs> that's putting your trust in God, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it was interesting because that <clears> point <throat> changed my, uh, it was a changing point. I, there was things um, changing in front of me. Uh, I was starting to see things different. I was starting to feel uh, m more love for people and trying to start to lose some of that uh, Mormon pride that, yeah. you know, that uh, the, <clears throat> yeah. we're the best. Uh, we're, you know, it's uh, <laughs> only true church. Only or... true church and, you know, we're, we're um, you know, and we have the, you know, we have the truth. We have the prophet. We have, we have the priesthood and the, yeah. make the covenants. And, um, <clears throat> But it was a very uh, difficult time <laughs> after that point. Even though I was beginning to see some good things, it was a terrible year. I was, uh, uh, for the next about 12 months, uh, I felt like a, a punching bag <laughs> between trying to follow Jesus alone and my traditions uh, in the LDS yeah, Church sure. and my obligations she was really torn. I was really yeah. torn. My my son, my youngest son, he was um, turning eight. He had turned eight. Mm -hmm. And boy, every, I mean, every time I heard his age, you know, my son's eight, all I could think of is, you need to get him baptized. You need to get him <laughs> baptized. You know, you're going to, you're going to, you know, you're going to ruin his life if you don't get him baptized. And so I actually took the family and said, we need to go back to the LDS church. Okay, so you could be worthy to baptize so, your son. Yeah, uh, but that was, it was miserable <laughs> going back. <laughs> it was miserable going back. I, um, I had such a focus on, you know, being able to baptize him and get him baptized. Uh, I, I kind of didn't pay attention to a lot of things uh, that were going on. Um, so what happened is, is yes, I had the bishop trusted me again, so I could baptize my son. So and, you get him baptized. And... So I baptized him in the LDS church. Uh, but uh, things that were happening right around this point really uh, got to me. Uh, what was that? In the ward, it started one one time was <clears throat> in a, a Sunday school class. The uh, the teacher. <clears throat> was saying how the uh, how the book of how much greater the book of Mormon book of Mormon was over the Bible, especially the Old Testament, Old Testament, because the Book of Mormon physically uses Jesus Christ <laughs> in the text, yeah. and the Old Testament never says Jesus Christ in the text. And I said, I raised my hand and I said, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't say that because Jesus Christ is Greek, <laughs> and uh, and uh, well, that must have caused a, a ripple. <laughs> it was a little bit. I, I, I <clears throat> after I said that, I looked around the classroom and everyone stared at me. <laughs> and I, he, he, we said a few things back and forth. It wasn't like real yeah. mean spirited, uh, and uh, he, he got to a point where he moved on. Yeah, uh, but it, it bothered me that he was, it was just such a pride thing. It was like the Book of Mormon is so much greater than the Old Testament just because Jesus, Jesus Christ's name wasn't in the Old Testament. What? I, that that yeah. blew me away. He, the, the man did apologize to me. Did he? I, I think his, his wife knew that I had a point. <laughs> and so he listened to his wife. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> and, um, but uh, the the nail that really ended it all was a fast and testimony meeting, and people several people went up, and it was nothing about Christ, nothing. You noticed that? Oh, I did. I mean, I sat there for sixty five years and never noticed that. Well, I'm. It was very abundantly clear that day. Uh, no one was talking about Jesus. That's amazing. And it it. I was just, I, it was bothering me. I was starting to get irritated. But it was like, why are we? So I remember I went up there and I said, I like to bear my testimony. I know Jesus is the Christ. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what else, anything else I said. I, yeah. I, 
But uh, Good then place. a few people after that, well, they went back to norm. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't mention it. I mean, saying in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Sure. Uh, that doesn't count. No, Because th- you're not talking about him. You're just, no. you're just saying a closing. Right. Uh, and uh, that was just, and uh, um, a little bit to that, they had stuck me in uh, a safe calling at that time. I was the librarian. Oh. <laughs> they didn't trust. They, I, I had enough trust to use the priesthood, but not enough trust to have an actual <laughs> calling that, you know, I t- teach or teach. lead or um, <laughs> influence, anybody. influence anybody. Yeah. <laughs> so I was in there making copies. And I finally, it came, uh, it, I felt very strongly inside of me. I believe the Holy Spirit was telling me, it's time to leave. You don't belong here. And I was. I took my children. Uh, my wife was actually not there on that Sunday. I took my children after the service. I finished doing what they had asked me to do and stapled the papers and whatever I did. And left and didn't go back. Wow. Did you go to a Christian church? It took a little that? bit. It took a little bit. Um, I uh, we did find a, a lovely church uh, at Christmas time that year in, in two thousand um, two thousand eight, and uh, it was Grace Church of Willow Valley there in Pennsylvania, right, really close to where I live. Wonderful. It was. I. What did you think the first time you went there? Oh, the first time I went, I went to there. I we actually went to a. Uh, a Christmas Eve service that was designed for children. Oh. And uh, the, they had puppets, which, you know, I was like, that's interesting. But when they, they sang Joy to the World, it was, it was so exciting. It was Joy to the World, <laughs> Joy to the World. And it was, and it was the Lord has really come. believed it. <laughs> and it was like, this was, this was amazing. It was fantastic. And, um, uh, you know, the, I just loved it. it. Was every single sermon after that was about Christ? I know. Yeah. Bef- bef- <clears throat> even before I went to that church, I had visited another church, and and I'll have to tell you, this is the first time I saw a drum set in oh. front of a church with an electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I thought a little different. Isn't and it? people raising their hands, and I was like, "What in the world?" I told my wife, "We're never coming to a church like this." But then we ended up doing it. And so I actually ended up being in the worship team. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah, because they play guitar. So. <laughs> That's fantastic. But now, you, I mean, we appreciate that joy and the, the, the thrill yeah. of actually being there worshiping Jesus. And yeah. That, that we just didn't sense in, yeah, in Mormonism. Yeah, the, you know, the hymn book has some, uh, the Mormon hymn yeah. book has some really good Christian songs, but yeah. they also have some that are, um, don't sit well with me. Um, Not quite biblically based. No, that's for and sure. you know some of them are just, you know, <laughs> about working and uh, and such. Well, I you you mentioned in a, in something that you shared with me about Jesus being a door. Do you remember that comment? Jesus was a. It was just a door, not part oh, of the oh. salvation story. Yeah, yeah it's it's like um, uh, in, L- in the L- uh, LDS theology, it was Jesus just a door to open. Then you then you walk up the mountain. You do it. You do we it. Do it yeah. It's just he he's just, there, and he's he's just there, and he'll you good know, helper. It's, and his point may may say, okay, that's the way you need to go. Yeah. You know, but the way I view Jesus now, he. Uh, he he took me, he grabbed me, and he he carried me up the mountain. Well, you said too that he was part of the salvation story, but he's actually the the, 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 salvation. the salvation story. Yes, uh, he's not at, part of it. He, he is he, the salvation. He's story. absolutely. He is. He is it. If yeah. there was nothing, if there's we knew nothing else, it's it's all about Christ. Yeah. If you had to point back to a born again moment or something. Now mine was kind of processional, you know, I just all of a sudden realized I was a new creature somewhere along the way and that I'd turned my life to Jesus and trusted him completely. Did you have that moment? I, I, I point to my, uh, the time when in 2007, bef- uh, when I went inactive the first time. Uh, there, was a, there was a change in my life. Um, I also, um, when I've told this story to other people, they said, were you maybe you were saved back in 
before you even went on your LDS mission because there was a, a the story goes way back then. I don't know, but I point usually point to what happened in 2007 when I said, Lord, I will follow you. And when I said, I'll even go back to the LDS church. That is, that is turning your life to Christ. And uh, so. yeah, it is. And, and, and I am grateful that I actually, even though it was miserable, now that I look at it, I was grateful I went back to the LDS church just for a time because I was able to learn so much and see so many things. Um, I think the Lord allowed me to go to, to benefit me. That's, that's and, and that he ultimately received glory because I believe, you know, God is sovereign over all. Sure. Well, and to have your eyes open just a little bit even and uh -huh. be able to look at things objectively, it, I think that helps a lot, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, and it takes, I mean, we are fallen and it takes, the Holy Spirit's got to, he's got to work with, you know, this. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes time. I mean, yeah. you know, and... Um, you know, I've seen, um, you know, like some YouTube videos and how, you know, it's just says, you know, Jesus is working on you and he's, you know, he's like chipping the bad things off and, right. and it yeah. hurts. Sometimes things hurt, yeah. but they're going to make us to be exactly what he wants us to be. Yeah. And uh, has the Bible taken on any different significance? Oh, yes, the Bible. Uh, the Bible is fantastic. I've always, uh, you know, in all honesty, I've always been drawn to the New Testament. The New Testament's really? all, yeah. I, uh, I, I, it was interesting, even on my mission, I thought the most meaty verses that we used were from the Bible. Really? Not the Book of Mormon. Wow. I really loved the New Testament. Now, I was faithful, and I still um, believed that there may be errors in the New Testament. Yeah. Um, I believe the Book of Mormon was flawless. Yeah. Uh, who knew? Huh? Yeah. Uh, but you know, even though uh, one of my companion, a couple of my companions said, they said to me, uh, "Hey, Dombrowski, you really like the Bible." Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. You, huh? Yeah, in my final testimony uh, upon leaving uh, my mission. Uh, now, I did. I did uh, bear witness about the Book of Mormon, but. I bear sure. witness about the Bible too, actually. Did you really? Yeah, I did. It was it was that meaningful to me. But I will tell you the after that that time and um, um, I believe I was born again, two thousand seven. I uh, put my King James down, and uh, I read a, an NIV version, and that was doesn't that. It's amazing. It was it? amazing. It was nothing wrong with King James. No. There's nothing wrong with King James other than the fact that it's language from 400 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I still use it. So, and yeah. I mean, and there are plenty of Christian churches that use sure, that too. Sure. Um, but I put that aside and I read the New Testament and the NIV. I mean, it was, I came home from work, I read, went down for dinner, came right back up and I read. And it was, it was it was some, one of the most powerful readings I ever did of the New Testament. I mean, this information in my mind was just like, wow, I've read this before, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's so exciting and so true. Isn't that amazing? It, oh, it was, it's, it is. Um, it's so fantastic. Oh, it's, a, it's fantastic. And it, it tells you um, everything you need to know to know the Lord. And that's that, that's the most important thing. It's not. Yeah. Had you understood grace at all? We're just about out of time okay. actually. But had you understood grace at all as a Mormon? Not really. Yeah. I don't think I ever referred to uh, grace never ever. Said the word probably. I, I didn't. <laughs> I don't think I did. Yeah. Um, you know, usually when I heard grace, it was like, oh, that's anti stuff. I know, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you know you always see the. The signs that you know you are saved by grace through faith, uh, uh, Ephesians two eight and nine, and and you know it was always that was always kind of an you know, it was <laughs> it would seem to be because it was not comfortable, uh, no grace. One it, you know it was amazing once I came to the realization that Jesus did all the work. I my work is like filthy rags. Mm -hmm. It was all his work. His righteousness. His, yeah, his righteousness, because I have none. Right. But, it, you know, he he gives his righteousness to me. You know, I believe in him. Uh, the blood shed on that cross, mm -hmm. and he rose from the dead. Uh, and it's, 
It, what a glorious message. It, it is, it is, and it's, I'm, I am so excited about Jesus. He's my favorite topic to talk <laughs> about. I love to share him. Uh, and, uh, you know, my, uh, my LDS uh, friends and family, um, if I could share about, you know, a message for them. Yeah, let's, let's wrap up with that. Um, what you'd say to your family. What do I say to my family? I said, first of all, I love my family and friends. I love them dearly. Um, but when it comes to Jesus, Jesus is not part. He's the whole thing. He's the, he's the real deal. He is stronger. He is more powerful than all our sins. Yeah. He is, and his love is everlasting. Uh, his love endures forever. And by focusing and trusting him alone and not a church, organization, priesthood, uh, those things are veering you away from Christ when all he asks is that we have faith. He says, faith like a mustard seed, move the mountain. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there was no, there's no work involved there. He that believeth in me yeah. hath everlasting life. life. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, this uh, Jesus is, um, he gives rest to the weary. Yeah. And, you know, his yoke is easy, his burden light. And uh, if you look at the, the church and if you do what you're supposed to do, it's not a light burden. <laughs> oh, no, that's a heavy burden. Yeah, and the guilt. And, and the, oh, the guilt the is terrible. Yeah, with Jesus, there, yeah. there, there is no guilt. No, no guilt in life, no fear in death. It's the power of Christ okay, in life. Guys, thanks so much for coming. Oh, I can thank see you. your enthusiasm for Jesus. And I, I just feel that same. I don't show it as well as you do. You have such a, uh, uh, such a spirit about you. But uh, there's no question that Jesus has, has done something in our lives that oh. we just could never have imagined. So yes. thanks so much. Well, thank you so much. It. Thanks. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>